Hi, this is Stan Goff. I'm with Dental Products Report, and today we welcome Heather Clicchio. She's the founder and the president of the American, <clears throat> excuse me, Association of Dental Office Managers. And during these crazy, uncertain times, she's here to kind of offer up some advice and uh, tell us what she's heard from some of her membership. And uh, just, uh, just uh, we need some, uh, we need some good news for the industry here. Welcome. Hi, Stan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here, and I, I certainly hope I can be the bearer of some good news for everybody. So, you know, here at ADOM, we've really been in constant communication and, and in personal touch with so many members. So I'm hoping I can, you know, be a good steward of their message and relay what I'm hearing from the managers um, during this time. And during this time, I mean, it, it's, this is an unusual time for the world, for all of us, all the industries. I imagine there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty. And uh, so what have you been hearing from some of the members and what uh, have you guys been able to do to help out? Well, certainly there's been uncertainty, if that makes sense. Um, you know, it's unknown for all of us, not just in dentistry, but in every industry, in every state, in every country. So I, I do think we're finding some solace in that, in that this was not targeted to dentistry uh, or healthcare. Um, you know, we are truly all in this together. And what we've done at ADOM, so we're the professional association for the dental managers and the practice administrators, immediately when, you know, we saw this was really real. I mean, over a month ago, my team within 24 hours put together the ADOM CARES program. And what that is, Stan, is um, it's three-pronged. It's education. So we have been bringing up to the minute education to the practice managers about what they need to be doing in the moment. And that changes day to day. Uh, we've been doing that with you know, Facebook Lives and posting um, information. And certainly if DPR has anything they want us to share with our members, send it over and we'll make sure everybody um, has access to that. Certainly. And we um, opened up membership. So we, during this entire time of COVID, waived membership dues because what we were hearing was so many managers wanted access to the member resources that we have, you know, that we've created that kind of live behind the member wall. And because of uncertainty in their practice, because finances are frozen, it's obviously not a good time. So we just opened it up for almost a, probably about a month and said, if you are a manager with a need for resources, come on into our fold, no charge, no questions asked. And so we've seen quite um, an explosion in our growth in membership, which is great because thirdly, what we've been able to provide back is community. So we don't have all the answers, but putting the members kind of member to member and giving them each other as resources and the strength of each other um, has been something that really has just been invaluable. And that's the thing in these crazy times where you, you have an, uh, a community that uh, somebody comes up with some nice solutions. It's, it's great to share because people are, are looking for help. They're looking mm -hmm. for resources. Yeah. And it just sounds like this was a wonderful time for you guys to reach out and help more people. It's been, it's been a blessing in disguise in that just for that reason, you know, we've been doing what we call ADOM tribe talks and those are private um, video meetings where we are just offering the platform to the managers to really just share best practices and share advice, not in a public way, because, you know, everyone's feeling a little vulnerable right now. And um, that, that I think is really, as much as the kind of the nuts and bolts information, just having a sense of community right now, I think is um, so important. And obviously staff and, and, and uh, office managers, I mean, the ones that are able to uh, work from home or be in the practices on a part-time basis, I imagine there's things that they are learning uh, that are different. They're doing things differently and, and they have stories to tell and that stories that they can share to help people. Yes, absolutely. And what was so refreshing uh, for me to see was that, you know, understandably so many dentists had to lay off or furlough their entire teams. Yet in so many cases, the one employee they retained was the office manager. Um, for several reasons. One is to um, keep a handle on the books, which is critical right now, and also to kind of serve as the liaison between the dentists and the team. So a lot of dentists, you know, um, I don't know the right way to say this, but are, are feeling a lack of control yeah. and don't know how to handle it. And the office manager in so many cases has just been such a great liaison between the dentists and the team and keeping everyone unified. So um, what we're seeing is 
while the dentist had to lay off so much of the practice, um, the office manager has not, has, has really stepped up and become more critical um, right now. And not only are they serving in a communication capacity for the team, but they're really digging in. And now is such a good time. Like, the, and I, I've said this before, but the one thing none of us ever seem to have is time. And now we do. So let's mm -hmm. not squander this, this gift of time. What, what do we do with it? You know, all the things, oh, if I only had time. And I think that applies so much um, in the dental practice or really in any healthcare practice. So some of the things I've been seeing members do is, uh, well, for one, they are really digging into their software. Like all the things in the software that you said, I wish I knew how to run this report or I wish I, I understood this better. Yeah. So many of them are taking the time now to learn the reports um, we have on our site, you know, some really cool things you could be doing on your, you know, with Dentrix right now that maybe you didn't know before. We're adding one for EagleSoft, um, but really uh, getting to understand the things that you wish you understood better. And so many of the trainers are available for, for virtual training. So now is an excellent time to really get a handle on the facets of your software that you always wished you understood better. Um, now is a fantastic time to look at, to create or revise your employee handbook. That's something that kind of goes to the bottom of the to-do list. In my opinion, that should always be at the top of the to-do list because that's your Bible in the practice. I mean, that's, you know, you don't want to wait until there's a question, you know, somebody needs to go on a maternity leave or someone's got a question about PTO. You don't want to wait until it happens. You want to know before that happens what the answer is. So now is a fantastic time to, if you don't have one, create your employee handbook. And if you have one, work with your HR company and make sure it's up to date and make sure everything is covered. So when you go back to work, which we are all going back to work soon, you have that ready to go. Um, something else really interesting that we're recommending our members do is look at your cybersecurity protocol. And the reason we're recommending that is we have a member and I'm certain she's not the only one. Her IT company was hacked um, with ransomware right before this crisis hit. So all of her data is being held stop hostage. Um, so while so many members are working with their data to get it up to date, she can't even access it. And so we're recommending to our members now is a good time. Again, something else you don't really think about. Look at what, what cybersecurity protocols do you have in place? Now is a good time to reach out to a cybersecurity consultant and make sure that you know, your servers are protected, your IT company is compliant, that you're HIPAA compliant with your data, all those fun, fun things. <laughs> um, also looking at your books, right? So looking at your financials, looking at your P&L, which obviously not in the last month, but going back and making sure you understand and as a practice manager that you have a really good understanding of a P&L, of a profit and loss, that you aren't just doing things because you've always done them that way, but yet you really start to understand what that means. And that goes kind of hand in hand with running your software reports. Now is a good time to work with your accountant and go line by line through the practices P&L. Where can we save money? Where can we increase revenue when things are back to normal? And lastly, <laughs> um, keep, they're keeping in touch with their teams. And that, of all the things I've said, that really is probably top priority, making sure you are communicating with your team, um, that you're giving them confidence um, that everything will be okay because it will, and that you're, you're, you're checking in. We're recommending weekly via Zoom, but then also kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, with everyone just to do a check-in. And lastly, lastly, Stan, I forgot, take care of yourself. I mean, we're, you know, when we're back at work, it's gonna be crazy. So mm -hmm. if you can sleep in now, once in a great while, do that, do that, and just make sure you're taking care of yourself. That's why this is a critical time to take advantage of the opportunity to deal with a lot of things you maybe are too busy to do uh, in a normal situation, but uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come in handy down the road. Absolutely. Uh, something else that, that we're seeing members do is prioritize treatments that weren't completed. So when you open, um, you know, some people are worried they're not going to be busy. I predict everyone's going to be so busy their hair will be on fire. Um, there is pent up demand. 
people will, oh, you know, dentistry is somewhat bulletproof. People will always need their teeth cleaned. They will always be in pain. They'll always need treatment. You want to start prioritizing the treatment that's not complete so that when you reopen, you can get the people in first who have been waiting and who need it the most. So you don't just want a mad dash. You want some, some uh, you know, prioritization going on there. That's the thing is this is such an unusual situation where you, you've never really had practices be forced to sh to turn away patients for a long period of time. And there's going to be quite a demand soon. There is. We had one member um, who posted, uh, I think, on social media that they were reopening and she got like 85 phone calls in an hour for appointments. So there is, you know, people are worried that the patients won't want to come in um, for fear of, you know, virus or PPE, but it's so important, and this kind of falls with the manager to be putting out to your patients and to your community what protocols you'll have in place to protect them. Um, then the dental practice is probably one of the safest places to be, one of the most sterile and cleanest, you know, sanitized places that any patient can be, and now's a good time to let them know the things you've always done, right? Yeah. We're not all just getting clean and and sanitized we've always been that way so now's a good time to say here's what we've always done for you whether you've realized it or not and here's how we're stepping it up a little bit and put it in terms that you know the, the lay person can understand but get it out there to your patients let them know it's going to be okay for them to return that it will be safe for them to return and that is also something you want to be talking about with your team now is what what will the new normal look like so can we have how many patients can we have in the waiting room? Can we have them in the waiting room at all? Will we need to go out to the car or text them to, you know, in the car? When we're seeing that a lot where um, in emergency situations, patients are coming up, waiting in the car, waiting to get a text, coming in, going right to the operatory. Make those plans now. You don't want to be making those plans the first day you're open. So you know, have different scenarios laid out of what that might look like so that you're ready to accept patients. And speaking of emergency situations, since that is what a number of practices are are at least able to do at this time, is there any way to um, that the the managers and the staff have to uh, communicate to the patients and the people out in the public? Uh, you hear about you know some dental emergencies rushing off to a hospital and a hospital can't handle them because of obviously this pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a way to kind of uh, make sure that there, there's more communication as to how or when these dental emergencies should be taken care of? Yeah, absolutely, Stan. And that's something that um, Adam has really been behind and, and part of that campaign, don't go to the ER. You don't want to go to the ER if you don't have to. There are dentists open for emergencies. So if your practice, what we're seeing the practices do is uh, a lot of them are emailing their patients, their active patient list saying, we are or we are not open for emergencies. So let them know. And if, if you are, this is how to contact us. And also it feels like everyone is kind of living on social media more than usual these days so we're seeing a lot of the practices put out on social media we are open for emergencies this is how you reach us and um you know everyone listening now is probably in healthcare. for some reason you're not don't go to the emergency room unless it's yeah. truly an emergency and speaking of the whole li liaison role and the communication i mean uh a lot of people a couple of weeks back might not even have known how to use, you know, Skype regularly or Zoom and this and that, but now it's critical. And is it something that um, the staffs have worked with the managers and working with the doctors, working with the patients to try to help the, you know, teledentistry, just communication. I mean, that, that's gotta be critical this time. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all gotten, you know, very tech savvy very quickly these past few weeks. It's amazing what, what, what you can do when you have to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I think the Zoom meetings for the teams will, will go away uh, at some point. Teledentistry though, you know, I think maybe on the rise, people might be saying this is a nice alternative and it's new, it's, you know, it's kind of a, a new frontier. Um, we did um, a Facebook Live with Dr. Roy Shelburne where he talks about how to start implementing teledentistry now and then maybe to make that a part of your practice, you know, a, a, a different part of your practice when pe people can go back. That might not be something everyone needs to do in the future. You might want to include teledentistry as a service that you offer. Yeah. I think we're going to see as part of the new normal a lot of things that we didn't expect, but a year from now will feel completely normal. And I do think you know teledentistry will be one of them for kind of quick routine things. The hope is that we, we won't be in these types of situations very often, but when we are, it's nice that there are abilities to communicate, uh, to do the best with diagnosing or advising, um, you know, 
patients what's best and how to take care of them, even if they can't run into the practice and see you right away. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, um, there's a lot of companies, I, I think RevenueWell, I believe we have quickly added a teledentistry component to their service. So if um, anyone, any managers watching are using those or you have similar um, platforms, technologies, see what they're doing. It was kind of like a lot of them had them in the works and this kind of forced them to push that that part out, but apparently they're super easy to use um, and our members have had a lot of success with those. And I know you, you addressed a little bit about the reopening. Is it, it's just, um, it's going to be a new world, hopefully soon, hopefully we have good news and, and healthy people and, and practices, but uh, just are there certain things that uh, practices really should be working on now to enable that smooth, potentially crazy transition in a good way? What they should be working on is a plan. What's our plan? Like I said, you don't want to be creating a plan on your first day open. Get together and include your team. Let them, you know, because everyone is part of this. It's not just between the manager and the doctor. It's not just the doctors. It's a full team experience that everybody needs to be heard and everyone needs to be bought in. So right now is a good time to be looking at what does our plan look like? What does our social distancing look like? PPE might be a little unknown. You know, we, we're, we'll have uh, Linda Harvey talking about OSHA next week. That's probably the only unknown, but what will, will we be taking temperatures at the door? Um, how will we be having patients sign in? So those types of things you really want to address now. Uh, you also might want to be talking about, will we need extended hours? Because there might be more time needed per visit um, because of PPE and all that. So who's willing to work different hours, weekends? We're hearing a lot of practices saying that they will do evenings, they will do weekends to accommodate kind of, um, even though the demand will be there, it might be a trickle effect coming in until everyone gets situated. How do we serve our patients during that reopening? And what we're seeing is a lot of practices say they're going to add hours um, to accommodate that, you know, until they, till, until they get a flow going. And like you, I imagine there will be some patients or the public out there a little nervous about getting back into the routine of things and maybe even being a little concerned. I think the dental industry, like you had mentioned, already real big in infection control, already clean, sterile, safe. But just, uh, I think just communicating that message uh, to the public, uh, to the patients going forward might be critical here <laughs> during these it's times. absolutely critical as much as you can. And uh, I heard someone say, you cannot be, you cannot over communicate right now. So say it and say it again and say it again. And sometimes people need to hear it the 10th time before they actually hear it. So if, and, you know, talk about what you've always done. You know, it's not like this, you've had a dirty practice and now it's sterile. Talk about what you've always done and then let your patients know, in addition to what we've always done, this is what we'll be doing. We'll be taking temperatures. We'll have you wait in your car. Anything to make them feel safe and know it's okay for them to come back. And say it every way you can. Say it through email. Say it through social media. Call your patients. I mean, that's something, now that there is downtime, a lot of the practices are having their team call patients um, to talk about not past bills, past overdue treatment, but also just to check in and just to say, how are you? You know, we care about you. Are you okay? And now is a great time for relationship building sure. on so many levels. And getting a call from your dentist is you know, I, I did ask some of the members, what's the response? Are they annoyed? They said they're so thrilled to hear from us and to know that we care and that we're thinking about them and we're, yeah. we can't wait to see them again. So while you're on those calls, you can, if, you know, if it comes up, talk about what you'll be doing or what you plan to do when you reopen so that they know they'll be safe coming to practice. I think this time it's critical in, in that uh, patients, it's not like the doctor's calling uh, marketing uh, to schedule appointments, just are, are right now communication and checking on people, um, not just the elderly, but patients, friends, neighbors. I think uh, getting a call like that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and like I said, our members are, are having tremendous response with that. Um, and you're, you want to do it from your heart. You want to do it because it's the right thing, but it also does go a long way to building loyalty to your practice. And I'm trying to think, um, just, so you, just so you and our audience know, uh, MJH Life Sciences, which is the uh, uh, company uh, overseas dental practice report, they, they, they deal with medical and all types of publications, not just dental. I'm just wondering if there's, I imagine there are, are uh, lessons learned from the dental industry that can actually be shared throughout healthcare. 
well, absolutely. And uh, my husband is a physician, so I, I'm always kind of, you know, <laughs> thinking. And as different as dental and medical are, completely different animals, there is crossover. So I think the first thing in the medical community, medical community is value your office manager, value your practice manager. You don't sometimes realize how valuable someone is until, you know, a time of crisis. Um, utilize them. They're, they're, it's amazing to me uh, the passion that managers have for the practices they serve. And it truly is a passion. I mean, some for some it's a job, but for many it's a passion. So if you are a physician, if you're in you know, healthcare outside of dentistry, now's really the time, I think, to honor your team and understand how important they are to your practice. And I think everything I mentioned earlier about what dental practices could and should be doing right now certainly applies to medical. Check out your employee handbooks. Are they up to date? Do you have one? Look at your cybersecurity protocols. Look at your P&Ls. All those things are critically important all the time, but again, things we don't always have time for. So um, do, do those things. And also, doctors, talk to your patients. Put out there you know, when you'll be reopened and, and how you plan to make your patients feel safe. Gotcha. And then also maybe just so you could let us know a little bit more about uh, your association and, and maybe let uh, uh, people know what types of services you have and where they should, can go for more information and yep. what all you're doing. And not just during this pandemic, but all the time. Uh, so ADOM, American Association of Dental Office Management, we are a national association and we serve the dental office managers, practice administrators, practice leaders, through education, which there's so much right now on COVID. If you go to our website, dentalmanagers.com, we have an Adam Cares page. You can access it at the top. That's everything you need to know um, to help get you through this time. Everything from PPP loans, you know, because a lot of the managers are the ones filling out those loans and getting the paperwork needed, the documentation. That's all there. Um, if you are a dentist listening to this or a doctor, and you don't have those loans in, make sure you're working with your office manager. They, they know how to access all that. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about it. Um, so really lean on your team. Uh, but if you go to our website, like I said, there's all the, the COVID resources, HR questions, PPP loans, OSHA. I mean, you know, stepping up to leadership during this time beyond COVID, which I'm, again, just so proud of my organization and what they've assembled as far as resources. Uh, we do so much. I mean, we, we have monthly webcasts, probably about twice a month for our members on different facets of practice management um, during regular, you know, times. Yeah. And we have a members forum where the members go and talk to one another. We have a magazine. We have 75 chapters across the country. So go to our website, see if there's a chapter in your area. And the chapters are really special because it's, you're connecting locally. You know, we're a national organization, but that local connection is super important. And I'm really seeing the chapter members now tap each other and, and look for help. Um, we also have an annual conference, Dan, and I'm hoping, uh, you know, you or DPR can be there because we plan on being there September 10th to 12th, uh, Boca Raton, Florida. So, you know, that's adomconference.com. And we are planning on all systems go for that. That would be wonderful. Yes, yes. Now, office managers always have a lot going on, not during just during this difficult time, but I imagine now just uh, the community part, we'll go back to that a little bit, just helping one another, sharing good stories. And uh, all the, there's a lot of negative, sad things going on these days, but there's also a lot of good stories and they're always, they're always kind of fun good. to share. There's a lot of good. Um, and ADOM members are just, you know, by nature leaders and leaders in their community. And what we saw when practices started to close, what was the leaders getting donations of PPE to bring to um, their local hospitals? Yeah. They said, we don't need it right now. You guys need it. And organizing those, organizing um, food drives to take food to the healthcare workers. Um, just really uh, digging into the community, which has been just so wonderful to see. Um, and just checking in on each other, really yeah. just uh, becoming, you know, family. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it, we don't want this ever to happen again. But and it's there's been a lot of sadness, but there's also been just a lot of good community, dental industry, other industries, and it's just it's it's just nice to see the spirit and people willing to help, and and uh, hopefully we're all going to get through this soon. 
Well, and I have to say, I, I've just been so impressed by the, like you said, the entire dental industry and how how supportive we've all been of one another and sharing resources and sharing information. Um, you know, pre-pandemic, everyone was like, kind of like, this is mine, that's yours. <laughs> now it's everyone, everything yeah. is everyone's. And I think that, you know, it's just me. And I think that it's going to carry through beyond this and that, again, the relationship building, right? You and I haven't spoken. <laughs> it's been a <laughs> while. 10 years or something. Like, and now we are. And I think people are connecting again. Yeah. and sharing and i think that's really going to spill over into how we all operate going forward uh, in the practices in the industry yep. uh, so I, I think dentistry is on to really um great amazing things after this i agree i mean it's been there's just a lot of kindness and support and helping during these tough times hey keep the kindness and helping uh, when times are better and uh, everything should be even better yeah one, one thing I want to mention we are doing for any dentists who are listening, um, the tribe talks I talked about where we do private um, online yep. meetings. They're not, it's not a Facebook thing. It's, it's private. We do have one for dentists um, whose managers are members. So we have one tomorrow. Those have been really good, Stan. I mean, I, because the dentists, I think, don't have so much that private peer-to-peer -peer, um, yep. live connection so we do have one tomorrow it's facilitated by a dentist and i'm just serves you know we just offer our platform for that um but really good conversation on those and the dentists are scared and, and rightly yeah. so um and sometimes just sometimes it's just enough to hear that others are scared as well yeah. say yeah. oh okay it's not i'm there's nothing wrong with me like it's okay sure. to feel this way you can kind of clear that away and then move forward so uh, if any dentists are watching, listening, uh, check our website, dentalmanagers.com slash adomcares, and under upcoming events, you'll see uh, Tribe Talks, some that are just for dentists, and a really, really good conversation happening there. Well, thank you very much. This has been, this has been a great, and, um, you know, uh, trying to get some good out of the bad, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to better times and happier times, and, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon, and we'll be at some uh, conventions soon. Yep, we'd love that. Well, thank you so much for having me, Stan. This was wonderful. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Take care. Okay. Bye -bye.